I welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I discuss you in details about the capillary tubes, its constructions, why its diameter is smaller or larger, means how to select its diameter and lengths, what's its advantages, disadvantages, and its complete working. So first, we start from this figure. So this is the capillary tube. So it is installed between the condenser and evaporators and it is used to reduce the pressure of the refrigerant from condenser pressure to the evaporator pressures. So this liquid refrigerants coming from the condenser is supplied inside the capillary tubes. In that tube pressure is reduced. So how the pressure is reduced that discuss later on the video. Then after pressure reducing it is supplied into these evaporators. Okay. So this capillary tube it is simplest type of refrigerant expansion device or the flow control device so capillary tube is generally constructed from the copper have a very small diameters and certain lengths so it is widely used in the smaller capacity of the systems that is generally used in the our freezer freeze air conditioning systems water cooler so in that smaller units we use the capillary tube now this capillary tube have a certain diameter and a certain lens. So it is a available on the different diameters and the different lens. The copper tube have an internal diameter of 0.5 mm to the 2.25 mm. And it length it varies from 0.5 meter to the 5 meters. Okay, so diameter is given in mm and the land is written into the meters. So according to the different applications, according to the requirement of the pressure in the evaporators, we are able to select certain diameters and the length of the tubes. Then it is capillary tubes is installs between the condenser and the evaporators in the liquid line. And this pressure drop means how the pressure drop is done in the capillary tube. So this pressure drop of the refrigerant in the capillary tube due to the frictional resistance offered by the small diameter tubes. Okay, so refrigerant is coming from the larger diameter tubes. Now when it is supplied into this smaller diameter tube means in the capillary tubes, it's offered some frictional resistance and due to this frictional resistance its pressure is reduced. Means this flow of the refrigerant adjusted on such a way that the pressure drop inside this tube means what amount of this pressure drop is done in this capillary tube is equal to the pressure difference between the condenser and evaporators okay and this pressure drop is directly proportional to the land means if we increase the land of the capillary tube then pressure drop is increased Okay, because it is directly proportional. So delta P is directly proportional to land. So land is increased, pressure drop is increased. And this pressure drop is inversely proportional to the diameter of the capillary tube. That means if we increase the diameter of the capillary tube, pressure drop is reduced. So if we require the higher pressure drop, then we select the smaller diameter of the tube. Okay. And that is a number of possibility. Suppose we require to the change in the pressure from the condenser to the evaporator is 6 bar. So from the 6 bar pressure difference, there is a number of diameter and length is possible. Okay. That is a not a single tube is possible. If we select the 1 mm diameter, then length is dif different. If we select the diameter of 0.5 mm for the capillary tube, then its length is different. So number of possibilities for the different diameters and the different lengths. When we select the particular diameter and length tube for the certain pressure drops, so it is a fix for the particular systems. Then after we are not modified on that. If you learn something, then like my video and subscribe my channel. Next we study the advantages and disadvantages. So advantages of this capillary tube is that it is a simple in construction, no maintenance is required, its cost is also lower. When the compressor stop, it allows the high and low pressures to equalize. Means when we stop the pressures, then it start to mix with the low pressure refrigerant in evaporator and high pressure in the condenser. Means it's are mixed. 
and after some times we are achieving the same pressure for the voltage systems and according to that smaller smaller low starting torque motor can be used okay so smaller size motor or the smaller starting torque motor we can use in the compressors receiver is not required when we install the capillary tubes it cost is also considerably low because the copper tube is coming to very low cost disadvantage is that refrigerant must be free from moisture and dirt otherwise it will be choked the tube and stop the flow of refrigerants so if there some time moisture inside the system so this moisture is converted into the ice inside this tube capillary tube then it's choked the system means flow of the refrigerant is stop inside the system so system is must be free from the moisture and dirt thank you for watching this video if you learn something then like my video subscribe my channels and share with your friend